Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen. We have a little preview of Fleet Week because we're going to be running around the 3.9.1 PTU and they've got some of the Fleet Week assets here. And uh, yeah, we're going to be looking at a little bit of a space station kind of uh, fleet dock as well as the actual sort of like uh, Brevik Convention Center and all of its UE Navy um, apparel that's all around. Ooh, Fleet Week! Fleet Week! Ooh. We had a Fleet Week teaser trailer that showed off a lot of military ships flying down from the station above Arc Corp around Area 18 and then a large focus on sort of like the military parade flyby display kind of aspect with the F8 Lightning being shown off here a lot as well as capital ships with the Bengal, the Idris and Javelin. Alpha 3.9.1 is out on the PTU and has quite a lot going on with it. The Brevik Convention Center and entrance to the Convention Center, which were there for the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo 2019, are all set up with assets and you can visit the Convention Center via the tram from Area 18 or from the spaceport at, uh, well, just by Area 18 on Arc Corp. We can't get onto the show floor yet, but the entrance has various UEE Navy propaganda, recruitment sort of stands, that sort of stuff, and there's generally sort of like has these inspiring features and scenics and dioramas. There is a Fleet Week jacket, hat, and t-shirt, which I was able to grab, and that entryway as well. It was very cool looking. Also, if you go up to the station above Arc Corp, there is a military ship dock now attached to Baijini Point. This is most likely going to be to show off some of the larger ships and potentially, as the Fleet Week poster suggests, have an area from where ships will stage their high-flying military demonstrations from. Star Citizen leaks have suggested there will be a standing fleet of multiple F-8 Lightnings, two Idris and a Javelin by that station, and that some of these ships will even land and do flybys in their demonstrations by Area 18 and the Convention Center there for a while and then take off uh, again and return to the station. Whatever is actually shown, I am extremely hype for Fleet Week now. But 3.9.1 also has Evocardi testing for Theatres of War over the weekend. There are going to be a few short focused tests. This is more of a quick stress test and sanity check before going out to more players in the future it seems. I'll be NDA'd for those actual Evocardi tests unfortunately. I did play Theatres of War at CitizenCon 2019, very much enjoyed it. I'll um, try and get good at it to an extent where I understand it for when I can do uh, a video in a bit more depth on it. But 3.9 9.1 also comes with a slew of bug fixes and improvements with a noticeably more stable and better performing build. Let's take a look at some of its patch notes which I've sort of compressed down. In range radar markers should now show correctly. They've increased the distance players can scan and detect sentries and probes. They've slightly increased player character strafe speed so you actually move around a bit quicker. Uh, the duplicate static trains should no longer be appearing at New Babbage and Lawville. They fixed issues with the 890 jump hangar not opening for the boarding action mission. They've temporarily removed scramble races temporarily. I can't words. They've removed timers for the steel stash mission. The synced assassination missions should now properly update when taking out the target. They've updated mission info with correct data. Clovis and Miles Eckhart missions should now show objective markers and update when arriving to them. And they fixed um, various mission giver issues as well. Players should more consistently respawn without issues. Ground vehicles should now be able to be spawned at outposts again. Fixes for some ship ladders have been made. AI should no longer stand idle on chairs and benches, though they definitely still T-pose for sure. Uh, they fixed an issue that caused surface outpost airlock doors to have uh, no collisions. They uh, fixed various bed logouts and they should be working uh, on a lot more ships now. Uh, players shouldn't clip into the bunk beds of the Reclaimer Retaliator and Hammerheads. Also, lots of bed fixes actually, I'm thinking about it. Players should no longer exit out of the wrong side of beds when getting up and should be able to uh, be better aligned with many more seats. You'll be able to see the number of people in the particular server of your friends as well now in the friends list. They've reduced players' movement speed while charging railguns. Uh, various FPS weapon bugs uh, have been fixed as well. Uh, there's fixes for a huge range of audio issues and 
uh, some VoIP stuff as well, like you can't be heard globally in VoIP when you don't want to be. They uh, fixed some odd reflections, missing MFD data and world holes. Comma Ray turn on missions should now work properly as well. Players' negative virtue should now reset when completing a prison sentence legitimately, allowing them to see more than just unlawful missions for the duration of their career. EMPs should no longer bypass shields and are fixed for various missions. Uh, black market kiosks should now be present again at their intended locations. They fixed multiple areas that had players getting stuck in uh, for various reasons. Also, consoles that have no collision have been fixed. Um, there's been uh, extremely strong winds that have sort of like the random ones um, have been fixed in lots of areas. Ships being blown away by the wind when landed uh, seems to have been fixed. Characters no longer become invisible and unusable. Players should no longer spawn without their Moby glass attached. They fixed the duplicate ship issues. Players should no longer lose their wallet value on the second login. Alpha UBC should remain consistent after a player resets their character and from session to session in general. They fixed nine server and 18 client crashes as as well as a server deadlock issue. There was some uh, other more ship specific stuff as well they fixed. Uh, fixes for various ships and items in the loadout manager. Items can now be changed on many more ships and vehicles and it should be showing the correct information for those vehicles. Components should now correctly contribute to a vehicle's signature. Fog inside the Aspira Prowler should no longer clip through it. Uh, they've reduced the health of the Prowler's nose as well and the top remote turret should no longer be attached to its wing mounts. There were some shield fixes. Uh, the Reclaimer as well now only supports a size 4 power plant, a size 3 quantum drive, and they've changed its shields to 3 size 3s. The Buccaneer can now equip a size 1 gimbal, or size 1 gimbals in general. Uh, they've increased max speed of the Retaliator to 942. Uh, a few Arena Commander and Star Marine fixes that I believe uh, a dev got this in quickly because they were talking to some people on Spectrum uh, that had some issues with uh, Arena Commander and Star Marine, and they went, okay, well, I'll fix that quick uh, in the next patch. Uh, so they've updated Arena Commander free flights to longer, no longer kick players for friendly fire. They've increased score to rec conversion for all electronic access games. I believe it's 70% of your score. Don't quote me on that, uh, but I believe that's what the study was going to do. They've increased rec rewards for Star Marine. The Arena Commander scoring pass on all the ships has been done. They've reduced the score required for Battle Royale and Squadron Battle to 15,000 from 30,000 respect They've reduced the time limit for Battle Royale and Squadron Battle to 15 minutes. They fixed an issue that could cause multiple player ships to spawn on top of each other in a multiplayer arena commander. That is actually quite a huge amount of fixes and from playing 3.9.1 it seems pretty sturdy with only a few known issues at the moment. A multi-tool in the prison um, doesn't come with an orbit a mining attachment when you get it from the uh, commissary. Uh, the, if a player exits um, like to the menu or disconnects or crashes during loading into the prison, um, then their loadout will not be changed, which is obviously an issue. Uh, ships can be displayed in an unknown state, unclaimable and irretrievable. This is the major problem with 3.9.1 at the moment in the 3.9 branch. Hopefully I'll get that solved. Uh, when going into aim down sights and crouching with a couple of weapons, uh, the player uh, is unable to see through the scope and some security guards are behaving unnaturally. Other than that, frame rates and stability are extremely good. What we wanted for initial 3.9.0 build kind of good. That's what I'm, I'm seeing here. Other than the really the ship's some people not being able to spawn their ships effectively because they're in an unknown state or unclaimable or retrievable. That's that's what needs to be fixed. Um, we'll probably see Cloud Imperium tweaking that patch beyond just those known issues over the next few days and then releasing it with Fleet Tweak to live on Friday the 22nd of May along with sh a ship sale, lots and lots and lots of ships being on sale. Uh, a free fly, so anyone with a Star Citizen account and um, just need to make one can try Star Citizen from the 22nd of May to the 1st of June. You will be able to play, bam, for those like 10 days or so, uh, which is pretty, pretty cool. Um, we're gonna see the Expo Hall open up as well and potentially those awesome military ships doing flybys and displays. Expect different manufacturers each day of the expo of this um, Invictus um, Fleet Week. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty cool. I think it's going to be better than the Intergalactic Aerospace Expo that we had in 2018 and 2019. But what are you thinking? Are you playing 3.9.1 on the PTU? What do you think of its improvements? 
is the patch stable for you? Is the patch good? Uh, do you think Fleet Week is going to see a solid build of Star Citizen Live? Or are there still too many bugs? Whatever your thoughts, I would love to hear from you in the comments below. Every month we have a giveaway. For May, we're giving away a Star Citizen game package with Arrow Light Fighter. All you've got to do to be in for a chance of winning that is comment on any of my videos made during the month. More details below. I am a shill for a couple of companies, NordVPN and NordPass. If you are looking for a VPN or a password management system, I recommend you check them out. They've got many benefits over free services. And as I'm pretty security conscious, uh, I love those kind of services. Also, there's Shadow. If you are thinking about getting a new gaming rig or upgrading your gaming PC or Star Citizen or whatever, then consider Shadow instead. It is a internet cloud-based subscription service like Stadia, like G force now but this one gives you access to a full windows 10 environment that was fully customizable and that is significantly better in my opinion allowing you to do a lot more with it check out the links below for them or use the code board gamer for discount also if you wish to support the channel further there is patreon there's the youtube join member button down below that really helps this is a community supported channel and i wouldn't be able to do what i do without the support that i get if you want to share these videos if you want to comment give feedback whatever that is also in hugely appreciated Thanks very much for watching, guys. You take care, and I'll see you in the verse.